Hello, welcome all. In the previous episode, we have seen the basics of moonlighting. What is moonlighting? Who are involved in moonlighting? In this brief learning session, we are going to see about the various contents which is projected here. The various other facets of moonlighting. The first one is how many percentage of employees are involved in moonlighting? So of late, many companies are telling that employees are moonlighting. Many companies are sacking employees. But what is it? What is the real percentage of employees who are involved in moonlighting? Actually, as per a survey, if you see, even if the moonlighting is formalized, that is the gig employment is formalized, it is assumed that only 5% of the full-time employees will be involved in moonlighting even if there is a formal policy so the number is very negligible one can say if it is a big company maybe five percent may be huge but in case of a medium or a small size company five percent may be negligible the reason is uh, uh, there will not be work-life balance one cannot give a quality output for more than 40 hours if he works, she or he works for more than 40 hours per week. So one cannot work scientifically more than eight hours per day continuously. So that is why this percentage is very low. Even if the moonlighting policy is formalized, it is assumed only 5% will be engaged in moonlighting. So this is the crux of the issue. Now, moving on, there has been a divided opinion among uh, technology giants and new age companies so certain uh, technology companies uh, are dead against moonlighting for example wipro has given pink slip to 300 of its employees who were involved in moonlighting even they have sacked one of the top 20 persons 20 persons one among the top 20 senior most person within 10 minutes because the concerned person has involved in moonlighting and their chairman has stated for them ethics is more important than profit and productivity infosys another technology giant was was also against moonlighting earlier but now infosys is taking a different cue it's going to allow moonlighting with prior approval again happiest minds one of the uh, software companies is against moonlighting it has also sacked quite a number of employees but the exact number is unknown so which are the companies batting for moonlighting one is tech mahendra tech mahendra's ceo gurnani said the company is okay with moonlighting provided the employees take prior approval from the managers and they meet the productivity and efficiency targets. In fact, Tech Mahindra is going to come up with a formal moonlighting policy. Then some other companies other than software companies, Swiggy, it's a new age company. Swiggy has also encouraged moonlighting but with the prior approval of the company all full-time employees please note here full-time employees are allowed to involve in moonlighting in swiggy with the prior approval of their managers one more fintech company which is a unicorn has also encouraged moonlighting so how wipro identified these moonlighters this is a big question wipro has identified these moonlighters we can wonder person will be having two laptops as shown here here many laptops are shown maybe two or three laptops sitting in home and uh, uh, doing work for multiple companies wipro has identified with the help of universal account number registered with the provident fund provident fund has a excellent deduplication algorithm which can identify if there is more than one donor for the PEF, it can identify it. And therefore, they have identified the moonlighters and 
sack them with the help of their universal account number UAN and Aadhaar. That is how Wipro has identified those 300 moonlighters. Now, what is the opinion of union? So, we have seen the percentage of employees moonlighting, which I said only 5%, maybe even if it is formalized, and the opinion among technology and new age companies. Some are for it, some are against it. Now, the opinion of union. The nascent information technology employees senate, N-I-T-E-S, has commented that employees cannot be treated as bonded labors. It is their prerogative to do any other work after office hours. This is the opinion of the IT employees union. Many unions will come up with a similar opinion only. Now moving on, whether moonlighting is legal and ethical. In many Western countries, for example, North America, let us take the case of United States of America. There is no necessity to issue an appointment order except for employees working in defense or with the federal, that is the government. Other sectors, it is not compulsory to issue appointment order. So the culture itself allows them to involve in moonlighting. America follows employment at will concept, at will employment doctrine, which means they can hire and fire at any time. Therefore, the culture itself permits moonlighting. Moving on to UK. In UK, again, there is no prohibition on moonlighting, nor any law prohibits any employee from moonlighting, unless and otherwise it is spelt in the contract of employment. Canada also fall, follows a similar pattern like UK, unless and otherwise the contract of employment prohibits moonlighting, employee can involve in moonlighting. Now coming to our country, that is India. Here there are certain laws which regulate double employment. First is the Factories Act. Under Section 60, there is restriction on double employment. But this is applicable only to factories and not to shops and establishments and not to IT companies. Again, there is Central Employment Standing Order Rules which has an exclusive service condition. Again, there is restriction under sh shops and establishment central rules for double employment. These are the various laws that prohibit moonlighting. But in the new labor codes, that is occupational health and safety code, it's prohibiting moonlighting. Again, it is applicable only to factories but under the new standing order rules for the uh, service industries, there is an exclusive service clause which allows the employees to do moonlighting with the prior permission of the employer. So that is in the uh, annual, that is under the proposals. So the employee can take moonlighting with the approval of the empl employer. That is the proposal under the new standing order rules. Now moving on to the independent director, director's role. In many boards there are independent directors. Are they not involved in moonlighting? Is that not moonlighting? Is the question asked by the people who are supporting moonlighting. Yes, obviously people are in many boards are privy to, to certain confidential information and they, they, they may have the knowledge and ideas being discussed in the meetings. They can use that knowledge and ideas for their own companies. Yes, that is moonlighting. But having said, said that, it is regulated and therefore there are no issues around it. Independent director is a requirement as per the Companies Act. It is regulated and therefore there are no issues around it. But anyway, there are questions whether what is the role of the independent director. Does not he have any access to confidential information about other companies which he may not use for his own company? Yes, certainly. Now moving on to the solutions. Your solution means actually how to address this burning moonlighting issue. First, employers should understand this moonlighting 
we cannot stop this moonlighting and it is next to impossible to stop moonlighting. Today we are in the era of candidate, candidates. Today the job market is driven by candidates 95% and therefore one cannot stop moonlighting. But is it ethical then what to do? If employees are fully engaged and are happy with their work and pay, obviously they are not going to involve in moonlighting. But it is possible to make the 100% of the employees, the working population happy is another debate, is a $1 billion question. Therefore, the employers may permit moonlighting provided it is not in the conflict of interest, provided the employee is not working for the primary employer's competitor or clients. Or the job which is doing there is no inherent conflict of interest if that is a scenario they can permit moonlighting but having said that employees should also keep in mind employees will have to do this additional job not at the cost of the primary employer not at the cost of the primary employer's time and resources whether money whether they are using the printer whether the stationery whether the mobile phone etc etc now coming to the conclusion so going forward this moonlighting will prevail as i told earlier it is impossible to stop the only way forward is employees employers should support this moonlighting as far as it is outside the working hours and there is no conflict of interest in their primary responsibilities if some, something interests the employees, the young, younger generation, we must allow them to pursue their passion, but not at the primary employer's cost. So with this, it's a conclusion on this part two learning episode of Moonlighting. I'm signing off. Thank you for watching.